Yo guys, last week I chucked up a video going in depth into all the different aspects of Cetus and the efficient farms that go along with it. So today we're going to talk about the superior Cetus, or what is more normally known as Fortuna. Fortuna has a little bit more to talk about than Cetus, with extra things like the Exploiter Orb and K Drives that are important to talk about as well. And yes, I know I did just say that K Drives is important to talk about, and I know that's a dumb thing to say. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to check that subscribe button. It helps out massively and you can always change your mind later. Anyway, Fortuna, while obviously having very similar aspects to Cetus, plays out quite differently when talking about how to run things efficiently. First and foremost of these is that bounties are actually a garbage way of farming standing, at least after you've gotten started. Bounties as a whole on Fortuna are way, way more buggy than bounties on either Cetus or Deimos. With bugs like the Spy Vault, where repeating the same bounty without leaving the open world can get you soft lock, as the game does not let you hack the same vault twice in one mission. On top of that, Fortuna has the most variants of bounty names out of the three open worlds, meaning that finding and running a good bounty is actually really hard. If you really want to run bounties, maybe for drops, or maybe you just enjoy them, this spreadsheet that I showed in this last video still works. While a lot of them look good, due to bugs, there are currently, at the time of recording, only two good bounties. These being the one called Network Collapse, and the other one being Scorched Earth. Once these bugs have been patched, the bounty known as Hunter Killer is a god tier bounty, but the problem is, at the moment, it is bugged. When or if a lot of the bounty bugs are patched one day, Fortuna bounties with a squad will be quite fast. Until then, there's very little point farming them. Now, in our previous video, we talked about re-rolling bounties and what it is. And Fortuna does have this as well, but it's not the same. For Fortuna, you can take over a camp, which requires doing a little mini defense mission, which can then allow you to run bounties from a new location. Sort of like the tents in Cetus or the mothers in Deimos. But in Fortuna, you can only run these re-roll objectives once meaning you can never spend any time getting a good objective bounty and can only really do so on the default bounties that are given. So what all of this boils down to is that we need to find a different efficient method of obtaining standing. That's when we talk about hunting. I mentioned that Fortuna hunting is good in our Cetus video, but basically hunting on Fortuna is the absolute fastest way to get standing if you do it correctly. You can max your standing out in 10 minutes, even if your standing cap is 31,000 at your MR Legendary 1. On top of that, it's really self-explanatory and it's easy. The most generic and easiest way to farm is this. Firstly, equip an Equinox. We use this for its sleeping effects. Also, bring along any sort of enemy radar that you can. These mean we never need to actually use our Trank Rifle, which just makes things easier and gives us less work. The reason I spoke about this second is hunting does require you to have gotten lures for a little bit of standing from the trader at Fortuna, which does mean that you can only do this if you've already done a tiny bit in Fortuna before. Now, enter the Orb Valus and equip the Tranquilizer Rifle. This will then show all of the locations for any animals that you have the lure for. Mark one of them with a waypoint and head over there. Follow the normal hunting procedure, but once you have used the lure and are waiting for the animal to spawn, Get rid of your tranquilizer and instead wait for the animal to pop up on your map. As soon as it does, spam your sleeping ability in its direction. Soon as it's asleep, run to it and press your action button to capture it. It's a super fast process. There are ways of course to speed this up. The first is knowing which animals give the most standing on average. So, we have the Kubridon which has a base version, perfect capture, which gives 2000 standing the medium rarity that gives 4,000, and a max rarity that gives 8,000. This is the best one to farm if you have it. But if you have a high MR and require a lot of standing in one run, you can use Stovers, which gives 1,600 normally, 3,200 for medium, and 6,400 for the rarest. And of course, lastly, for the best three, you can also do Harusk, which gives 1,200 normally, 2,400 for a medium rarity, and 3,600 for a super rare. Even at max MR, these three animals in one run can max your standing, depending on your luck. For those that already have a little bit more standing in Fortuna and maybe are just looking for a consistent way to maximize getting more, you want to be using the pheromones as well. Using pheromones while hunting actually completely removes the chance of a common animal spawning, 
so it will either be a medium or a max rarity. A 33% chance for the medium and a 67% chance for it to be a max rarity. Running this properly after some practice, you can max your standing very very easily and very quickly and even better, it does not have much of a gear requirement. No damage, no survivability, just the Equinox and a form of enemy radar. I highly recommend using this method. Of course, like Cetus, we also have fishing as an option. I mentioned that for Cetus I do fishing as my primary source of standing since I enjoy it. You can do so here in Fortuna too. The best location for this is caves. Looking for synthonids and caramotes, which are both high standing fish that spawn in both cold and warm cycles. Get some bait and some dye, then use the correct fishing rod and just relax. Luckily since fishing here is in a cave, it's very unlikely that you'll ever be attacked by rogue enemies, unlike Cetus. Also, here is a map of all the locations on Fortuna for fishing, taken straight off the Warframe wiki. The red here is the lakes, the green is counted as ponds, and of course all the caves are counted as well, caves. So if you ever need a specific fish for resources, just like the last video, it will take me too long to check and explain every single fish. Instead, check the wiki and use this map to locate where you need to go. There's a pretty chill way to get standing, and you can always stock up on it. For those further into the game, you can also use debt bonds and hand them in to Ticker for standing. The reason I say later in the game is because, well, you don't really get enough to max out your standing that often from debt bonds, and those who have played a lot more might have them laying around. Me personally, from farming PT, I got enough to use as my daily standing. Anyone else who has farmed Profit Taker a lot will also have the same thing. Now mining. In Fortuna, that's something that I don't recommend unless you really need the resources to build something. For Fortuna, all of our caves and rocks and whatnot, the mining nodes are generally super far apart. It is not efficient to mine for standing at all, and to be honest, for those needing the resources, there are not really even any locations that stick out as great places to go. Simply look for caves is kind of the best advice that you can give for that. There is quite an efficient way to get tons of gems, the issue with this method, however, is that it's not really accessible. It comes with the Exploiter Fight, which is located in the open world. To access this fight, you or someone in your squad needs to own a diluted Thermia. These Thermia are gained when running the Fortuna Fractures that occasionally spawn as a mini event inside the Orb Velas. On one hand, it can be a pain to farm if you don't have any. On the other hand, if you have farmed the Optical Vandal before, you would already have some. Or if you haven't done so yet, you can farm a new weapon while you're farming for this. The diluted thermia is run like keys, meaning only one person needs to use one to get access to the exploiter fight. So if you have three friends who want to run it, means four people, four fights. So having people who want to run it can get you more stuff for the same amount of thermia. Anyway, this fight is located in a cave all the way back here shown on screen. Running a Smeeta Kavat for this is advised, as it has a chance to double the drops, and having a booster of course is a great idea, although it is completely understandable if you don't have one. The Exploiter drops a ton of gems, like literally all of them. The main ones that are important to mention are the Zodian and this, which are the rarest and both have a 50% chance to drop. This is my recommendation instead of mining if you do own or can get diluted thermia, especially if you got some mates to help out. Speaking of the big spider boys, however, we also have Profit Taker. PT is the best credit farm in the game, however, it is not an easy fight and it is heavily gear focused. Mini is one of the things in the game that really does require very specific gear more than anything else in the game. To access Profit Taker, you need to hit rank 5 within Fortuna first. Meaning, once you've hit rank 5, you may then begin the Profit Taker questline. The fourth stage of this quest is what starts the Profit Taker fight. Once complete, you can fight this whenever you want by voting up the mission through the Fortuna hub. Now, similar to the Cetus video with Eidolons, Profit Taker has a very high skill ceiling and a lot of different gear options and information. However, we do already have a video in this case that goes in depth in all those gear requirements and advice on how to run it. So that'll be linked in the description. 
if perhaps you are at the point where you want to be farming Payte for some credits and want to see what it's like. Or maybe you're struggling with your first kill and want to learn the mechanics to make it a bit easier. And the last thing that I do have to talk about in Fortuna, and that's K-Drives. Now, although a lot of people don't like it and K-Drive is not really specific to one open world, Fortuna is the open world that brought it to the game and the hub in Fortuna is where you go for all things K-Drive. So I'll give two super quick examples for those that might be interested in maxing their K-Drives for MR or for hoarding sake. The first and most popular is K-Drive races. Very straightforward, upon equipping a K-Drive you can see all the current races on your map. Simply go there and do the races, pretty straightforward. For those who want to do it a little differently, you can do trick combos on the pipes just behind Fortuna. Simply doing tricks, just land on the pipe, grind and jump off again. Repeat the process. Every time you get to the end of the pipe, turn around in midair and keep the combo going. Just remember, the max score slash XP you can get in one combo is 3000 or 6000 depending on if you have the mod to increase it. But that's it, every area in Fortuna covered off. All the important farms and locations and information I wish I knew before I started Fortuna myself. I hope that this helped you guys. Next week we will have a Deimos guide coming out, so for those who are interested in that, be ready. Thanks for all sticking to the end, much love, and Robo out.